God is good. Uh, it's good to be back in the United States and see American food. <laughs> um, and um, no, it really is. It, it's, um, I, I, love, I love traveling, going to different places, and I always try to make myself available to the Lord. Um, I basically tell the Lord, I'm, just, I'm on your agenda, whatever you want to do, wherever I want to go. And you never know where you're going to go to the bathroom when you're traveling. There's been plenty of times when we pulled over and there was just a hole in the wall, hole in the ground. I'm going, there it is. <laughs> one church I preached at, they had one toilet and it didn't have a toilet seat. And it didn't have water to flush the toilet. You had to grab the rainwater and pour it in there. And I'm not very mechanical. <laughs> Are you guys glad that I came back? <laughs> Sharing some godly information with you. How many are edified already? You, you've grown in the Lord since I started. Father, I thank you, first of all, Lord, for um, what Noah said, our, family, our families and our church families. Lord, that, um, that we share our burdens, our trials. Lord, there's a... A lot of people struggling through things. There's a lot of people having victorious times, Lord, and we share in all those struggles together. It is a journey that we walk with you. You are the powerful God that we trust in. Uh, Lord, um, you're the one that's always the king of everything. And um, I pray, Lord, as I share today uh, stories and some of my own adventures that are a part of our adventure, Lord, that um, it would bring inspiration to people and encouragement. And it would stoke in them their own fire. Lord, that all things are possible with you. Nothing is impossible, like Adam said. He's facing a situation where he needs you to do the impossible. And Lord, we have our trials like that as well. And so, Lord, bring the scriptures to life and bring your word to life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I am going to share today. I, I, I do have a lot of photos to share with you of different things. Can you say with me divine moments? Divine, divine moments are moments that God orchestrates, you know, and you, you don't have as much control over them as you think you do. And one of our pastors, Daniel Brown, who you met here, I was with him in Los Angeles, and uh, he was saying, he goes, Eric, he, he said, he said, God never, he always works random with you. And he said, you know, sometimes I feel like the more I try in things, the more God doesn't do something. And the more I wait on him, the more I trust in him, the more, the more I, I look to his guidance and wisdom, the more that he does. Have you experienced that too? It, you know, I, I am the farthest thing from lazy. I'm hard, a hard worker. Um, you know, I, I'm, I move from the time I get up to the time I get to bed. I'm always busy thinking about something or working on some kind of project or something. I'm never just, uh, you know, I have to take a specific time off to take time off. But there are times when the Lord tells me, you know, you have to wait on me and watch what I do. And he puts together these divine moments and divine appointments and divine assignments and divine anointing times for me. And I hope that's true for you too. I'm always amazed at some of the miraculous things that God opens up um, in my life. It's sometimes overwhelming. I was just talking to our church in Idaho. Um, how many know that we have an adventure church in Idaho that we planted? And um, they're now planting their first churches. Yeah, they're one of the fastest growing churches in Idaho, growing like crazy. And um, they got a cooler adventure sign in the front of their church than we got. <laughs> it, all their construction guys came together and put some killer sign. And I said, where is our construction guys? <laughs> you know what I mean? We need the killer sign. No, I was just kidding. 
but, but um, you know, it, because God's doing amazing things. And our Philippine church, which we met over there, is one of the fastest growing churches in the southern part of Philipp- the Philippines. Um, Kevin and Shanna are just rocking it over there. Um, just really proud of, um, you know, the way God's using them. And it is a divine work. God's doing work. And um, I'll share a little bit about that. But I- I'm going to start just a few with... Um, a few precursors to this concept of divine moments and understanding this. God knows who I am. Does God know who you are? He knows who you are. He knows your circumstances. You know, Jesus says clearly to his disciples, he says, I'm the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. He he knows us. You know, Psalm 139 says, you know, he knows us, our inmost being. He knows the details within our hearts and within our souls. And he says, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, the same relationship I have with the Father is the relationship I have with you. I know you and you know me. And you may not realize that at times. You're thinking, gosh, Lord, where are you? Because the busyness of life and the loudness of the world can cloud our listening to the Lord. But sometimes if we just will quiet our spirit just for a moment, we can hear the Lord with great clarity. God knows who I am. He says, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. There's a security that God wants you to have. It's the problem with religion. Religion, you're always working your way up to God. You have to go to church enough. You have to attend enough. You have to give enough. You have to be faithful enough. But with God... He's done the work with Christianity. In Christianity, God's done the work, and he set us free. He paid the price for our sins. How many say amen? Amen. This is the incredible good news of Jesus Christ. It's it's so incredibly good. God knows who I am, and then God knows what I am. And I kind of wanted to start with these because if you are going to believe in divine appointments, you have to believe that God knows that he made you. You know, I preached probably, preached and taught and spoke, I don't know, 15, 20 times while I was out, at least. And, you know, I made the mistake of doing a pretty good job the first time, and then I got 10 more things right afterwards. Like, can you come here? Can you come here? Can you come here? And, and the Lord told me to say yes. So, so that's all I would say. They'd go, can you come over here? And I'd go, yes. And then I'd go, I don't know where I'm going. The next thing you know, I'd be in a car driving off somewhere. <laughs> you know, and I go, where am I going to be now? And it, just, some, just some miraculous stories, which I will share. But, but to Jeremiah, he says to him, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. God, when God made us, he made us with a purpose, with an idea. And you have to understand that he does heal us, even if it's death. Death will be the ultimate healing in the Lord. Did you know that? Where you will be in the very presence of God, made whole by him. And he said, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. You know, I had, I had one time when I was, I was preaching uh, in this television production. It's like their CNN. I'll show it to you on the picture. I ended up in this, there was no plan for this. God orchestrated this. And I ended up preaching the gospel through Taiwan and China, the gospel. And trust me, I was as bold as a lion. And coming against false gods and whatever, I could come just being as bold as I could be. And I know that God orchestrated those, I, those plans. A prophet to the nations. That's what Jeremiah was. What's your calling? What did God make you to do? You know, as I watched Kevin and Shenna in the Philippines um, as they were pastoring the church, this is not something that they orchestrated. Like, you know, I'm going to... And I think that happens in our nation all the time. People go to Bible college. People go to school to try to get a calling into ministry. But the calling that you have has to be from God. You can't make it up. Do I hear a louder amen? Amen. 
Like you can put the work in, you can put the study in, you can do whatever you want, but the calling that you have is going to be from God. And you'll be the most fulfilled in your life when you're just doing what God made you to do. Nothing more, nothing less. It's so sad because the world puts you on a track. Even the church world has a track that you get in and then you're in this groove and then you just follow the groove and pretty soon you're just conforming to the pattern of the world or conforming to the pattern of the church world. Rather than throwing all the spreadsheets in the toilet, a Filipino toilet, (laughs) and then realizing that God made you unique and he's going to build life, he's going to build calling, he's going to build ministry around you. God knows who I am, he knows what I am, and he knows where I am. It says, from one man he made all the nations that they inhabit the whole earth. He marked out their appointed times and histories, the boundaries of their lands. <sighs> this is what the Lord says, he who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel. Do not fear, I've redeemed you. I have summoned you by my name. By, my, by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. How many say Amen. God saying, no matter what the circumstances are, I'll be with you. I'll be with you, no matter what they are. I'm going to share some stories of our Filipino church when I get to the photos, but one thing I'll tell you is they have incredible slums there. Um, and I've, I've been to Africa, I've been to India, I've been all over the world. And we are not used to this kind of poverty where people are literally living in the garbage dumps. And, and Kevin was pretty shook up when him and I talked because just a month or so before, um, he was in a really dire slum. And one of the mothers who was drug addicted and the father and the drug lord had misused this baby and then handed it to him and the baby died right there in his arms. L- literally right there. And not even a thought went out to the baby. Just like, whatever, take the baby out of here. That's how dire it was in some of these areas. I mean, the government actually went to move people into different areas of of, of the Philippines to try to get them away from their slums, and they all came back to stay in the same place. People get used to the pattern of where they are. And, And people lose the fact that they're made in the image of God. And of course, Philippines has a huge religious influence, not necessarily um, the Christianity that we're familiar with, but a religious, oppressive, and corrupt religious system that often brings rules and regulations and control rather than the freedom that Christ promises. That people aren't being released and I'm so, I'm so thrilled that God would have us be a part of, the, of that turnaround. And, and you, might, you can easily go into any country that's having really dire and hard needs and think to yourself, I don't know what we can do here, but then you see the hope and God shows you even 12 people that he raised up himself can change the world. Just, just a few people can change the world. You know, I, I got, I, I incur, I, I was met with the, all of the Taiwanese Christian leaders and I met with them and I urged them toward evangelism because there's a real reluctance or fearfulness in their evangelism. And when, when I got done preaching, the leader there said, wow, I believe that God has given through your speaking a spirit of evangelism for our people. And I thought, boy, God can use you in the most simplest ways. How many say amen? Amen. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk to the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Now, number four, God is in charge of divine moments. I want to tell you about my trip now. And how many want to hear about my trip? You know, I feel like I'm sharing my own Super 8 slides, you know, from t- 10 years ago. When you went to church, you know, the pastor showed us his, like, vacation time or something. Well, I guarantee you this wasn't a vacation. Um, but 
my plan going in the trip is I knew the Lord wanted to do something, and I was asked to speak at um, the Foursquare uh, National like convention and a um, several things amongst local Foursquare churches, and so I spoke at our Adventure Church and met with their leaders and I had a time of building up our pastors, and then I spoke to the you know the um, the Foursquare pastors, and then I taught them from the Bible. I took them through the book of Romans. And um, in one day, I took one group through the book of Romans, and as soon as I was finished, they were going, can you do another book? And I was going, boy, in Utah, it's hard to get someone for an hour. They, they went like 10 hours, and at the end, we're going, can we go again? And I thought, wow, that is devotion, you know, to want to hear God's word. But there are divine appointments. I wasn't planning to go to Taiwan. Taiwan wasn't even in my plans. But right before I left, my friend from China said, hey, um, you know, I'm meeting with the the lady who's the head of the Chinese Academy Awards, and she's going to be in Taiwan, and she wants to meet you. And, And I said, okay, that's great. He said, so... You're go- I said, well, I'm actually going through Taiwan, Taipei, and then I'm flying from there right across the ocean to Manila. It's two hours away. And he said, okay, well, can you just fly on your way back? Can you stop and just stay an extra couple days there? And I said, okay, I'll, I'll work it out. Well, on my trip, I got on to, to Salt Lake And by the way, it was 45 degrees, something like that when I left. It was 98 degrees, 90% humidity when I got there. Okay, put it this way. The only thing I was looking for was an air conditioner. (laughs) And I don't mean that little fan that you hold. That's not what I meant. And (laughs) so I get on the plane from SFO, San Francisco, and I'm landing in Taiwan and then going over to Manila. Well, as I'm on there, I'm asking the lady at China Airlines, I said, I said, is there any way you can get me an aisle seat because I'm in the middle? And I said, trust me, no one wants me to sit in the middle. (laughs) Right? I will hog the whole row. You do not want me in the middle. And she goes, she goes, well, it's all taken. And finally she goes, I got your seat on the aisle on the very back of the plane, right near the back. So I, I, go, I go, great. I'm talking to Jody, and I go, man, I got an aisle seat. It's going to be 14 hours. And I go, so this is going to be great. So at least I have an aisle seat. So I get on the plane. I put all my stuff away. I get in my seat. I, put my, I move all the crud wherever I want it. And, and then these two Taiwanese uh, gals or Chinese gals are sitting next to me. And then this little Chinese lady comes up to me, and she goes, Hello. And I said, hi. And she goes, "Uh, my two friends are here. Can I sit here? (laughs) And in my heart, I had a pastoral Christian smile. (laughs) And in my mind, I said, no, (laughs) no, (laughs) no. I fought for this seat. (laughs) But my Christianity prevailed. (laughs) <laughs> I said, sure, <coughs> oh, Gollum, Gollum, my precious. <laughs> and so, so I go, okay, where's your seat? And her seat's in the very front of the plane, not, but not quite the front where you're first class. And, and so, so I'm walking, uh, it's on the next aisle, and I'm walking all the way up, carrying all my stuff, moving up the aisles while everyone's boarding the plane this way. So it literally took me like 15 minutes to get to my seat. And as I get there, the guy sitting next to my seat is a big guy too, from a Taiwanese guy. And so he's, and he's moving from on the other side and he sits down. And so I sit down and I go, okay, Lord, you want me to witness to get this guy? I'm going to witness to it right away. Then I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> so w- the plane starts going, and I start talking t- to him, and I go, hey. And I said, so, and I start telling him about myself, and I said, so, have you ever heard about, of the Lord before? I s- asked him, and he goes, uh-huh, you're witnessing to me. 
He goes, I'm a pastor. (laughs) I go, you're kidding me. And he goes, oh, that's so funny. And I go, I am too. And he goes, you're kidding me. He goes, the Lord moved my seat over here. Some lady wanted me to sit in my seat. I had to move over. This is him talking. And I said, that's what happened to me. And the Lord moved me up. And I I go, what are you doing here? And he goes, well, we came to San Francisco and just we had a place and all our pastors had a retreat. There was like 30 of us. And I go, well, where are they? They're all around me. They're they're literally, they're like all the way around everywhere where I am. This this is the picture right here. (laughs) Notice I'm on the aisle. (laughs) And, And... and it turns out, it's like, oh, where you are? Well, they're from Bread of Life. It's the largest Christian movement in Taiwan. Now, what are the odds of me sitting next to him, this pastor? And we ended up talking for eight hours. And he said, the Lord put me on a retreat, and now I know why. Because I do have a gift of prophecy, and I was giving him words the whole time. And, and, and the whole time he was going here, we started talking, and then another guy's pastor came over. We started talking. I was preaching in four churches before I left <laughs> the plane already. They were there, and I was talking to them, and then we started talking about one of the Bible books, and then we were going through it, and he goes, man, can you teach that at our church? And I go, I could. Isn't God good? <laughs> you know, so... Now I'm going to Taiwan and Taipei, and I'm going to be preaching the gospel there, everywhere. They put me in every evangelistic possible possible place that I could be. Well, I landed in Manila Airport and just started going through the streets and ended up in Balanga and then Bataan, which is where Kevin and Shanna are. And... um, you know, I looked that they got flags. It's very colorful, beautiful place in a lot of, a lot of places that there are. It's, it's very different from where we are from. It reminded me a lot of, uh, of India, um, if you have been there. And I, I just kept thinking, there's, there's got to be some hope. And I did. I found some hope. <laughs> you know. And it was just a confirmation. It was a divine moment. I said, praise the Lord. Because we ate stuff on that China Airlines that I did not recognize. (laughs) You know, I I just kept going and they go, do you want this chung fu or this chung chow? And I go, I want the chicken. Is there anything that tastes like chicken? (laughs) Like a dead frog tastes like chicken. Deer can taste like chicken. Is there anything that you have that tastes like chicken? No, we just have these vegetables that are colors you've never seen before. (laughs) Uh, With uh, oysters and squid heads. You, You know what I mean? Well, I went to the McDonald's, and of course, I never heard of the McFish head, but they had that. <laughs> and, I, and I've been at McDonald's all over. I went to the one in India, and they had no meat, because of course, they, the Hindus, they don't have any meat, so there's no beef. So, they're, so it's a false McDonald's. I came against it in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to take a stand. But I was looking forward to being at Kevin's house, and there it is. He lives in the jungle, in, in the southern part. And here, here's another picture of it. And so when I got, to, when I got laying in the bed, knowing that I was going to be preaching for the next six, seven days, and then after that, the next 20 days, uh, you know, I realized you know, that I just had to get comfortable, and I know how to roll with it because I've traveled a lot. And I get there, and I'm laying in the bed, and there's a spider about this big just up on the wall, and Kevin goes, don't even bother, because when you get rid of that one, there's others. And there was like 10 other little ones, and I was going, oh, man. So I go, I'm not letting the big one in while I'm sleeping. So I went after him, and he was a shifty little guy. (laughs) So he hid himself in my luggage. I don't know where. So I shook the luggage, and he went under my bed. I looked under the bed. I couldn't find him. And finally, I go, man, I'm exhausted. I got to go to sleep. And there was nothing I could do. There's nothing you could do because all around his house, and those of you thinking about going to that Philippine mission, he wanted me to make sure that you understand. If you are not comfortable with spiders, this is not the mission you want to go on. If you are not comfortable with super high humidity, 
and pretty much uncomfortability most of the time because you won't acclimate quite there, then don't go. And there's monkeys all over the place, wild monkeys, um, that don't realize they're monkeys. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, you just have to, you know, just kind of adapt where it is. And so, you know, it's a long walk to his house, and, and, and I saw David was over there, and he'd been now acclimated. He lives in some kind of hut on a tree, and um, <laughs> it was pretty fun. But there are divine appointments. How many say amen? amen? God can orchestrate things. These are the last kind of things that I would have orchestrated. You know, that, that God had this guy Chang on a plane that I would meet with. And I think that there are divine assignments. And, and the, the Bible says to each one grace, to each one faith has been appointed as Christ apportioned it. God, God knows how much faith we need, how much grace we need. And we got to Kevin's house, and, and, and Kevin does something different than most of the other churches, and I believe the Lord was leading him to it, and now many of the other Christian churches are going, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing that's different? Well, if you look, there are rivers that go in the city, in, in the local city, and people live all along the streets. As you go along the busy street, everybody lives along the busy street. They're like squatters. The, there's residents if you go further into the, into the land off the street, but people will live on the land and then take your electricity, and, and it's okay to do. By the way, there's no law here. There's no, there's no policeman within 100 miles. There's nothing there. So if you're planning on going on this trip, you're in God's hand because there's no traffic laws, none, <laughs> seriously, and there is no policeman. So thankfully, you know, the, the Philippine people have a very good disposition. But on one side of the river, you'll have the wealthier people, which to us are the poor people. And then on the other side of the river, you'll have the slums, which is dire poverty. They live on 50 bucks a month. They can't afford anything medical. They have no vitamins, no nutrition. It's, it's, some of them eat every three days. That's pretty much how it is. And, you know... The people on this side of the city, some have lived there 30, 40 years and have never been across the river because they're afraid of the diseases and the stuff that's on that side. Well, what Kevin decided to do, he said, Lord, show me what to do. So what he did is he says, I will set up a tent on this side of the river and get, try to get funding from some of the people here and then I'll go walk through the slums and minister people for hours. So Kevin, literally, this is him on the river right up there. He, he just goes across the river. And you could see where the slums are. Now, I, I, I took some video, but it's not, a, it's not appropriate to exploit people and take all kinds of videos. So I didn't because I didn't want to go there and, hey, guess what? We're shooting you to see what we're doing. It was, how many say Amen. It was more important for us just to, so I started off, that little girl right there is part of the church now, she's part of the slums, and she's getting her, t she's the first one in her family who's going to go to school and, and become a teacher, which will, be, which will change their life to have one person making an income. And, and, and Kevin started by meeting at their house every day. He'd walk to their house. He sits with them. I sat with them. And he just prayed for each of the people in the house. Then he went to the next house. And then he prayed for them. And then he went to the next house. Then he walked through. And then he went to all the crowded where all the kids and the, the tough kids were. And then he walked right into, their, into their, where they're all hanging out. And he talked with them. And then he went into the next place, and then he went into the next place, and then he went into the next place, went all the way through. And then we did it again the next day, and then we said, hey, we'll see you guys at church tomorrow. And guess what? Tons of them come. Tons of them come. It's awesome. I, I look out there like I look here, and I say, God is so incredible. God made you in his image. He made these conforming cultures, each person in his image. And, and, and the world 
mars it and ruins it and stains it. And God wants to set us free. There's so many times where I think God wants to come into the church, look at his people and say, set my people free. Let my people go. There's a release that needs to happen. That little boy, that's me praying for him. A little boy. Just, man, they'll, they'll take anything. Just give me some prayer. Give me some touch. This is just, this is the back end. I just took a sh- little shots here. It's all, all, all peering out to the ocean. It's nothing but pure garbage. There's nothing. There's no maintenance. There's no garbage people. They come every couple of years to clear stuff out. We're talking... We're talking, they're, they're living in those little tiny little things. And you, you wonder, you know, Kevin, you know, some of the other pastors were, well, you're going to get diseases over there. And Kevin's going, I'm not going to get diseases because my God's going to protect me. It says he protects, protectively cares for his faithful friends, his servants, step by step, but leaves the wicked to stumble in the dark. No one makes it in this life by sheer strength. All those Places are run by drug lords. I can relate to that. I can relate to that. I remember me selling, when I was selling cocaine, and one of my dealers was selling to a high school. I remember thinking to myself, man, I'm low. I'm low. Then I rationalized it. They're going to get high anyway. Might as well get high on our coke. Thank God I got saved and I preached the gospel now. Thank God. Because these are the little ones that come to church. They come and they're hungry. I told Kevin, I'd go pick 10 of them. So we had this plan. We go from one slum, then he goes to another slum, then he goes to another slum. But now he's reached his max. He can't go to more than three or four slums in a week. Literally, we could take our whole church and go into those neighborhoods, and I could give you each a neighborhood, and we could reach that place. Seriously. And I'll just, I'll launch you off. You got to know if I'm ready. You're ready. Go in there and minister the Jesus Christ everywhere you go. And that's what it is. You just walk, walk through the streets. And, and I said, grab 10 of the ones that you start to see that have promise, and I'm going to show you some of the pastors, new pastors that we have that are five months to a year old in the Lord. God's using them already. And this is at one of the buildings that he has over there with Shenna. And then they they have some really good-looking people that go to the church too. (laughs) This is one of of their worship teams. That, That drummer on the left side is just hitting wood. They can't afford a drum kit. They don't even have printers there. They can't afford printers. I said, hey, can you print this out? And he goes, oh, you know, no one, none of the pastors have printers. And I said, by golly, our church is buying printers. Amen? Amen. We are buying printers and we're sending them there. Amen? And don't give us your crappy printer. Amen? You can afford 150 bucks, get a good printer, send it to a church so they can actually print something. This is so, I mean, and these guys were on fire for the Lord. This is one of the children's classrooms there. They'll fit like 35 to 45 kids in there. Forget about the quotas. The fire fire station says we can only have 12 people. Trust me, that, that room was packed. These are all the people, four to five months old in the Lord. How many think this is exciting? Come on. Amen? Praise be to God. Just, these are people just coming to the Lord. I'm the fir- some of them, you know, I'm the first like American besides Kevin that they've seen. I mean, we, we, we are in some really dire places. We got some of the speakers there that our church got to help them get going on things. And you, here's a couple different viewpoints of it. Those slum girls that I was just talking about were there. They were there. We, you know, when we went on a mission to Holland, you know, They had prostitutes that started at like 10, 11 years old to 14. Well, guess what? Many of them got saved from the groups that we went to in our church and came to Christ. And they become leaders and influencers. And and this is me preaching there at that church. 
and, and laying hands on new Christians. Kevin and I preaching and laying hands on people, commissioning them and releasing them into their ministry of whatever God has for them. It's awesome. Some of those kids that you see at the bottom there, they just came, they're just from the slums right there. Some of them don't even have parents. They're just there, kids roaming the streets. But listen, there it is. For I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Hey, man, how many want to get up and do something worthy of something? Anybody? Man, don't you, don't you just, don't you want to, God can, God can use us in so many different ways. And, and some, I know that some of you are, have a calling toward ministry, and, and, and you're, you don't try to force it. Let the Lord's timing reign supreme. Amen? Until that time, just be a servant. That's the greatest ministry that you can do. Here, here is our future adventure church pastor. <laughs> it's going to be our next adventure church right here. <laughs> this is him getting his feet wet. You know, you say, say in the closing prayer, he also goes with Kevin to minister to the prison where, where they had almost 67 prisoners baptized and saved. I'll show you something. This is, this is them preaching over there, and this is him later. With, this is actually preaching in the prison. These are prisoners coming to Christ. And they said, what are you doing, Kevin? You know, the other pastors were saying that we're local there. What are you doing? You can't preach in the prisons. And he goes, yes, I can, and I just did. <laughs> and, and look what the Lord did. Amen? And this is, Paul, this is him answering the call. Some of these people are in prison for who knows what other reasons that there are. Listen, we can make our own plans, but the Lord determines the steps. Amen? After that, you know, I spoke to the, the National um, Foursquare Pastors Group, to a ton of pastors and leaders. Um, that's me speaking right there. Um, and they really want, and you can see the love of Jesus is over there. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Jesus is alive and well in the Philippines. Amen? And, and, and now, remember, Kevin's over there right now. This is in Alangapo. This is a place that's a major, like, harbor city. It's an important city. Here is Kevin praying for the mayor of the city. This is, this is him asking God to change direction of this city. And we're going. And the, and the, and the mayor, you know, sat, ended up sitting next to me and talking. And God, we did, I think God worked. And one of the leaders out there in the Philippines is my identical twin, Pastor Miranda. <laughs> that was a joke I gave them over there. I said that we were identical twins. But when it came to dinner time, I ate most of the food. <laughs> so poor Pastor Miranda never could eat. So, and, and here's me with some other more local pastors here in the Philippines with the eye care ministry. And um, so God's doing some stuff. So there are divine um, appointments, amen? And there are divine assignments that God assigns you to. You can't make them up. You can't force the hand of God. Be faithful with the little things and then be faithful to wait on the Lord while you're serving him. Think of waiting as like a servant who waits on a table. Waiter. You wait. And I, I think that this prayer is often ignored. In fact, most of the time I think this prayer is ignored. It's one of my pet peeves in scripture here. Is I hear prayers from people all the time. And I, I'm telling you, very rarely do you hear the Apostle Paul or Jesus praying like, you don't hear Paul going, and I pray for Peter's cousin, Johnny, and I want you to touch him, Lord, and I want you. That's how I hear a lot of our prayers. But it's not one that you hear that often in Scripture. The, the most often one, in fact, the one that sets it up is the prayer that says, Lord, not my will be done. What I want is not what's going to happen. What you want, that's what I want to happen. How many say amen? amen? It's the kingdom come, my will be done. It's a surrender to the will of God. It's Lord, I want your purpose. We don't pray necessarily, oh Lord, save them. We pray, Lord, give me the boldness to preach the gospel like I should. 
Lord, pray for me to have strength to not give in to fear to share this incredibly good news. That's where the, the Bible is. Now it is God who makes both of us, you and I, stand firm in Christ. He anointed us, set a seal of ownership on us, and put a spirit in our hearts as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. So let her see there are divine anointings. There are times when God just anoints you. How many have heard me share that I believe that God wants us to start an incredible film company to influence the world? How many have heard me share that? And, and I've talked to people when I've shared, I said, man, I said, we should start our own channel like HBO, start making, get the best Christian producers and stuff instead of some of the garbage we see and make something super high quality and, and start to influence the world so we can be actual influencers in our world and stop shrinking back with our end times fear mongering mentality because we're influenced by radio conservative talk show hosts rather than the prophets of God. Amen? And this is a pet peeve, as you can tell. And, 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 I, and I've said, and so I went there, I was in, now I'm in Taiwan, and, and I've gotten in there, and Chang has opened up all these opportunities, and I end up in their CNN, Okay? The, the EHS, it's a, it's a huge station, goes all the way across Shanghai, in China, all across Taiwan. It's a huge station. And I get there, and this is the, me actually getting there, and I'm going, okay. And what do they have right in the middle of this thing? Church. They got church right in the middle. It's really one television studio doing news, one television doing game shows, one television things doing hosting all kinds of stuff. Huge, you know, five stories with, you know, state-of-the-art giant things. And what do they have? Church right there. Amen. Yeah, but the IRS doesn't make sure that they don't want us to make sure. Who cares what the IRS wants? Amen. Who cares? We, what, we don't care about a write-off. We care about making a difference. We want to be bold and reckless in the Lord. Amen? Amen. That, that, by the way, that, the gal next to me who's interpreting for me, that she's one of the leaders of Hillsong. Do you guys know Hillsong? Hillsong Worship. I, I, I spent almost two weeks with her. We have total access to Australia, and it's Hillsong. You know, and they're doing some incredible stuff, and we're going to do some stuff with them. I told them, I said, we have some incredible worship teams. I want them as part of this Hillsong thing. And she goes, I'm going to make that thing happen. <laughs> so some of our worship teams, get ready. Because God wants us, wants your music to go out to the world. Amen? And not only the teams that are now, the teams that are forming. There's young people right now that God's developing them. I got my last five minutes, and I'm going to use every minute. You could, you could see some, the, some of this advertisement and stuff. There's, there's the pastors and leaders of that big television station right there. That, the, the, the girl, the wife right there is like bold as a lion. She followed me everywhere I went. Do, do you need this? Do you need this? Do you need this? I'm carrying my bag. She goes, I got the bag. She's like half my size. She's like carrying my bag. And I'm going, I, I can get my own bag. And she goes, no, 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 I get bag. And I go, okay, you get the bag. Hurry up with my bag. You know, what do you want to eat? She showed me, what do you want to eat? And I'm going, where is something I recognize? Is there something I recognize? Does this taste like chicken? I'll take that. And, and this is all, all a bunch of television and film producers right there with church right in the middle. How many say amen? amen. This, is, this is one place, and I went to all kinds of different places and preach, and, and they would advertise where I would and what, what I would do. And they, that was a picture I gave them down there of me in Africa, and they just cut it out and put it in there. And, and these flyers are all over the place. And then people would come and listen. This is one of the business places I went to where they had worship and church right there. Film. This is a, another television studio. And here we are doing church right there. See the couches and things thrown out there? The, you know, and the thing is, I got these new boots these new shoes, and it, uh, you know, it's like, I got these new shoes. Well, I never wore them, because everywhere I went, they go, I got to take off your shoes. And I go, I just bought these shoes to look good wherever I went. I should have just worn socks. 
And then I went to the international place of prayer. It's kind of like an IHOP where all the prayer people come from all over. And, and that, that's one of the leaders there. He, he, the, the last American that he had worked with over there was Pastor Jack Hayford. And, and, I, and that's with Zahn again. And then I, I preached over there. And then they, one of the things that I did with my friend David, who had come here, the Chinese man, is they wanted to write a story about the history of Taiwan and China and how that its real roots were Christian not the Buddhist roots that they thought they had, that the actual Dutch missionaries had come in there and made a difference. And so I, the, how we got to know each other is I went home and I wrote that film. And I said, what do you think of this? And he goes, I love it. Let's do it. Well, the story starts with these aborigines. So they brought these aborigines that came from that part of the island for me to pray for them. These are the aborigines, the descendants of these aborigines that are still living there in aborigine status. And, and we're praying there, laying hands on them. Here's another church and stuff just all over the place. And that's me with Dave, uh, David. He's showing me some, uh, a book um, concerning that history. And then some of you know that while I was there, um, uh, Laura Winkler and Brian Finn and I and Chris Stringfellow and a few others have been forming a group called Kingdom Seven that would be entrepreneurs from the Christian world to start influencing the world. Do I hear an amen? amen. We call it K7 or Kingdom Seven. Kingdom Seven Worldwide. Well, we started working on this one film that they had with this gal from the Chinese Academy Awards. And it turns out, I mentioned it last couple, three or four weeks ago, it's Mr. Bean's going to be in this movie. So, so we're writing his next movie. This is us working on the film right here, writing in it. And I love Mr. Bean. So it was, it, it's fun being able to write that stuff and see what God has. And, you know, then here's some, uh, we found a little bookstore that had alternate stories of Mao, like the real story that I thought was pretty interesting. And I wanted to also share some of our American culture with them so I wanted to share some of our eating habits and how we do things. So because I felt it was really important for us to represent well. Amen? Amen. And so how many say God is good? Listen, do you want a divine moment? I'll just share a few things as I close. Is your heart pliable to the things of the Lord? Don't answer yes if the answer is really no. Just say, no, it's not, but I want it to be. Be honest with God. You don't have, God knows when you're lying. Did you know that? And you don't have to be more than you are. There's nothing spectacular about me being able to be a part of what God was doing. You know, uh, I, I saw God do all kinds of incredible things. We only shot pictures of a few things. But... Each time, I just knew it was the Lord. It wasn't me. I was just being used by the Lord. It was, it was kind of sit back and watch what God can do. And there were times where God was, says, express yourself because I made you to be like this. Like I said over there, and I say it to you, you've never met someone like me because I'm the only Eric Van Rie that there is. There is no one on the earth like me. How many say amen? amen? I tell you the truth. You don't know anybody. You might think, oh, he kind of sounds and he talks like that. Trust me, we're different. I'm the only Eric like me that there is. And if that's true, you're the only you that there is. You were made to express yourself in the Lord with power. Walk in it. Why don't you close your eyes and I'm going to have you respond respond to the Lord. Father, I thank you that you are King of Kings. And can you just lift your hands up to the Lord? Hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah to the Lord God Almighty. Lord, pour out your spirit. Lord, all the places that I went, Lord, I went on behalf of our church and on behalf of the gospel. Lord, move powerfully in the Philippines, Lord. Do a mighty work. Lord, I believe that you want us to plant churches in Taiwan, in Shanghai, Lord, in Macau, all those areas. If not, I know you want us to be a part of that. 
Lord, I pray that you would help us to dream and think bigger than we are. Help us to overcome the trials and the hardships we're in because we're not going to be able to avoid them. Give us the strength that you have. And I want to give you a chance out here if you hear my voice. You're ready to answer the call for God that just says, like I said, I say yes to God. Just Are you ready just to say yes? No matter what he says, no matter where he takes you, no matter where it goes, you're just going to say yes. You're not going to fear and say, oh, God's going to take me to some terrible place or God's going to keep me here but give me some terrible ministry. No, you're going to trust God. You're going to say God knows you and he's going to take care of you and he will. If that's you and you're ready just to say yes, would you stand? Stand with me. Just stand. Just say, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Blessings to you, Lord. And just open your heart and your arms. Just say, Lord, let your divine appointments move through my life. Arrange and organize and structure my life. Move in me. Move in my family. Move with your power. You don't think God can take care of your finances? Well, he can. And he will. So, Lord, pour out your provision. And there are some here that need divine assignments. You're saying, Lord, I need to know what you're assigning me to do. And I say to you, be faithful in the little things. Be faithful with small things. Be faithful with little things. Be faithful with the first dollar you get. Be faithful with the $10 you get. Be faithful with the $100 you get. Be faithful with the little talent you have. And invest it. Don't bury it. And you'll see what God can do. And then you say, Lord, I'm open to your divine anointing. We are all anointed in Christ. But we need power for specific assignments and the times that God has for us. We say, Lord, fill me with the anointing power that you have. Just invite the Holy Spirit. Just say, come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill me. We just speak it out loud. I want to hear you say it. The Lord wants to hear you say it. To say, Lord, fill me with your power. Fill me with the anointing of Jesus Christ. Any age, don't worry your age. Don't worry if your parents are doing it or not. You can do it. If you're a kid out there listening to me, just say, fill me, Lord, with your power, with your knowledge, with your wisdom. Make me a powerful human being because I have you in my life. Overcome all the obstacles that I have. Lord, Help me overcome the darkness and sin in my life. Bring your light. Thank you for the grace that covers me in every possible way. And say, Lord, I commit my heart to you. Thank you for the cross. You do not have to earn your salvation. Jesus has earned it for you. He did his work on the cross and set you free. He paid for all of your sins. The sins of yesterday, the sins of today, the sins of tomorrow and next year. All your sins have been paid for in full. You are free. This is the good news of the gospel. You're not saved by your church attendance. You're saved by the grace of God. So just trust him and believe him. In Jesus' name. If you agree, can you say amen? Amen. How many got some from today? Hopefully. Hallelujah. Blessings to you. Hey, I'm Murph, and we really hope that you enjoyed this week's Adventure TV broadcast. We here at The Adventure have two main goals, to love God and to love people. And we hope that you felt that through this week's broadcast. If you would like to join us on Sunday mornings, we have services at 9 and 11 and also on adventurehome.org. Thank you again, and God bless. All creation worships you. All we never came to be. We'll bow before your majesty.